Audacity version 3.7.2 has been released, and in this video I want to show you a couple things that you will be interested in seeing. So let's go. Hey friends, Mike Adams here with Audacity Training. Audacity version 3.7.2 was released yesterday. And while there's not a lot of changes, there are a couple that I want to show you, especially as regards to the user interface. Take a look at my screen here. When you start Audacity, of course, this splash window comes up. It's been coming up since, I think, 3.7.0 or maybe earlier, where you have an option to watch a video on what's new in this version, as well as the availability to go to MuseHub to download uh, effects and other things there. If you don't want to see this screen, you can simply click right down here in this checkbox, and the next time you start Audacity, it won't show up. You can also do that in Preferences. Let me show you how. I'm going to click OK right here. If you come up to Preferences, and I'm on a Mac, so my Preferences option is under the Audacity drop-down menu. I think in Windows it's under Edit. So if you go into Preferences, and we come down here to Interface, you can simply deselect this box right here that says show how to get help at launch and you won't see that splash screen anymore. I'm going to cancel out of here. And here's one more thing that you're going to see when you open version 3.7.2 is this brand new splash screen here. And this splash screen is, is talking about app updates and usage information. Under app updates, there's really nothing new there. It just notifies, it's just telling you that Audacity notifies you when a new version is available to download. You can turn this off in preferences as well if you don't want to see that. But the usage info is brand new. Under usage info, it says Audacity is going to generate a random user ID, UUID for each installation. And this helps them, it says, to improve features and plan for future updates. This ID does not contain any personally identifiable information. But you can disable this at any time in preferences as well. You also have the option here of, of viewing the privacy policy, disabling this feature, and accepting and continue. So that choice is yours, but you're going to see this pop up when you open 3.7.2 if you haven't already opened it. Well, let me show you a couple of things on the user interface as well. I'm going to click out of here and go back to the user interface. You'll notice here that the share audio button has been reduced in size. It used to be the same size as the audio setup button. It used to sit right next to it where it does now. But now it's much smaller. And it shares that space with this other button here that says Get Effects. If I click on Get Effects, it gives me some options here to go download some effects, some of which are free, some of which you have to pay for. There's also a lot of music-related stuff on here if that interests you. There's a category called Voice and Podcasting. You might find something useful in here. And then there's options more related to music, as well as the bottom option there to become a partner. I'm just going to close out of here for now. I just wanted to show you that. The Get Effects button is there. And it now shares that space with the Share Audio button. So I'm going to come up here to my meter toolbar, the Record Meter toolbar, and I'm going to enable Silent Monitoring, just so I can look at the level that I'm about to record. I'm going to make a real short recording here because I want to show you something on real-time effects as well. So I'm pressing the R button right now, which is my shortcut for recording, and I'm just laying down this track. It's going to be meaningless. We're not going to listen to it or anything. It just needs to be there. So I'm going to press the space bar to stop recording, and then I'm going to skip back to the beginning. And now what I want to show you has to do with real-time effects. If I press this effects button here, it opens up the pane to add real-time effects. In the past, if I added an effect here, it would put the effect on the track, but it would keep the effect window, that is the option window for whatever effect I was putting on it, it would remain closed. And so I'd have to click on it again to open up the window in order to do something with that effect that I put on it. But that's been fixed. Now when you add an effect here, a real-time effect, it, it immediately opens up the window for that effect so that you can make your adjustments on it right away. Let me show you. If I click Add Effect, and let's come down to VST3, and let's go into um, let's go into Isotope here real quick, and let's select uh, Mouth Declick, which is right here. So I'm going to click once on this, and when I do, 
it's going to add the effect to the track, but it's also going to open the effect window immediately. So I'm going to click on that. And just like that, the effect now opens up so you can get to it quicker. It's a little bit easier. It's one less step, one less mouse click to have to do. And so that's a good thing. So if you're using real-time effects, and I hope you are, uh, this is going to save you some time in opening those up. I haven't really noticed much else that impacts us as podcasters and audiobook narrators. I am going to provide you with a link to Audacity's website in the description of this video. And that link displays a line-by-line -line item of what's new in Audacity version 3.7.2. So that's all I have for you in this video. Until next time, y'all take care.